The idea of reality as a singular noun doesn't make any sense to me at all anymore. What model do you use? I like the sociological term glass and grid, which some sociologists use. Kozybski called it your system of abstractions, which means a lot if you know the mathematical school he was working from, but doesn't mean much to most readers. Leary coined the magnificent term reality tunnel. I call it a neurological reality tunnel. Everybody has their own neurological reality tunnel, which is why we misunderstand one another so often and why we misjudge one another so profoundly. Can you describe what a reality tunnel is? We receive, I think, more than a billion signals every minute from the environment. Most of them are not even conscious of receiving. They affect our legs, our arms, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our chest. All this information is pouring in, and the nervous system is making evaluations at different levels, working its way up. One of the classic models is that we got three brains, the reptile brain, the mammal brain, and the human brain. I've heard that for so long. I don't know how far back that goes. I knew that when I was in my 20s, which means back in the early 1950s. If we try to be conscious of all the signals, we couldn't do it. Because to be conscious of that many signals simultaneously means we'd only perceive chaos which is the usual first reaction to LSD. Things turn into chaos, then they turn into different kinds of patterns. The chaos is because we can't handle that much information and organize it rapidly. So we throw out all the information that seems unimportant, which means we also throw out all the information that seems threatening to our belief system or to our dogma or to our ideology. We throw out everything we think can be ignored safely, so we concentrate on the things that seem important. Then our brain constructs a model out of all the information coming up from the rest of the nervous system, and we project the model outward and consider it reality. It's not reality, it's our reality tunnel. Everybody else in the same room is constructing a different reality tunnel. About 40 years now, I've been teaching workshops and seminars first on general semantics, then on neuro-linguistic programming and various other things. But I have done this experiment hundreds of times where I get the whole audience to describe the hall outside the seminar room. I never have found a case yet in hundreds of experiments where two people describe the hall exactly the same. The differences are sometimes astonishing. We all perceive a different world because our brains are organizing it according to patterns the brain has created to organize. And those patterns seem to be created, at this date it appears they are created, by our genetic programs, by our early imprints, by our subsequent conditioning, by our learning, and by whatever experiments we have done in reprogramming our nervous systems, which involve such things as yoga, psychotherapy, general semantics, neuro-linguistic programming, psychedelic drugs, brain tuning machines. And every time we reprogram our nervous system, our reality tunnel should change a little. If it doesn't, we haven't learned anything through that experiment that it was wasted time. If our reality tunnel changes a little, then we have to spend a lot of time in the next couple of years checking our new reality tunnel and see if we can communicate it well enough to others that we don't get locked up as raving maniacs. If we don't get locked up as raving maniacs, then you can consider your new reality tunnel possibly just as good as your old one and maybe more accurate in some ways. It's traditionally been part of alchemy for a couple of thousand years, both East and West. The multiplication of the first matter really means changing your nervous system from inside, what John Lilly calls metaprogramming.